welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurs in Fuego, season two. Uh, we are documenting the journey of amazing entrepreneurs, business people, local celebrities, football players, NBA players. None of which you are. Mm, I mean, no. the NBA <laughs> players or the football player. But I have with me my new best friend, Alex Hairston. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Real good. Real good. Uh, do I, should I call you barrister or just attorney, uh, esquire? Esquire, I believe, es is esquire. the. Esquire. <laughs> How did they come up with this barrister thing over in England? I, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> and some people put esquire at the end of their name and their business card. Yeah. I don't do that. What is it? What, what's the, uh, the, the for esquire for women attorneys? Is, what, what do they put? <laughs> I, I think it's still Esquire, honestly. I get a lot really? of... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I always wanted to ask that question, but I guess that's what it is. Right. How are you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? You specialize in family law. Right. Which is actually a very... You have to have a passion to be specialized in that particular field. Definitely, definitely. You have to... The thing is, it's so emotional, okay? So if you have... 30 or 40 cases at one time, you're dealing with 30 or 40 people's lives, really. Uh, because right now when you're going through something, whether it's custody, a divorce, that's their whole life right now. Um, and you know, I see, I see through these cases and give it a year or two or give it six months and people turn out, you know, they, they end and they go, well, I'm finally okay. I'm finally not thinking about that all the time. But when they're with you, they're just, I mean, that's all they think about. But Alex, you, <coughs> what you do though is commendable because you specialize in women. Yes, so when I first started practicing, I had quite a few females come into my office and they said, look, I've called everybody in Phoenix. I've called four or five, six different attorneys. Right. And each of these attorneys said, I can't take your case unless you, you know, put down five, or, right, yep. five or $10,000. Well, the problem is, you know, some of these women, they have the money in marital assets, marital property, whether that's in a bank account or a 401k account or whatever it is, and they've just been locked out of the, of the account. And so here they're coming to me saying, trust me, I have the money, I just can't pay you yet. Right. And so what I found is that, you know, this is a great cause for me to do is to take some of these cases and go and actually ask the court, ask the judges, and say, Your Honor, essentially we have, we have a couple accounts here that have a lot of money in it. Husband's represented, he went and paid his five grand. <laughs> he had no problem at all. Right, but here's <laughs> mom who's not yeah. represented, and she needs to be represented in court to, to get you know, adequate representation and to really advocate for her needs. And so we go ask the court, and the court says, absolutely, you know. This, this show, Entrepreneurs and Focus, is about documenting journeys of, of people such as yourself. And, and one, of, one of the key things that I find in interviewing uh, entrepreneurs and business people, uh, people that have worked in the corporate world and now jump into the uh, uh, solopreneur uh, world mm -hmm. uh, life, is that it's all about niches. It's all about finding a little bit of, of imperfection or a hole in the market and kind of fill it. And I think that that's what you've done. Yeah, listen. You may have similar experiences to, to, that I have had, but my mom, strongest woman in my entire life, uh, raised us four kids, uh, ran her own business. She was an entrepreneur as well. And then, you know, I met my wife who's here in the audience. She's now the strongest woman in my life. Right. She's kind of taken over uh, for my mom and does so much for me. And what I've found is that and you know, helping women and empowering women to get through even these day-to-day -day things can really, I don't know, launch them into the future and give them you know, empowerment that perhaps they didn't have in their marriage or perhaps they didn't feel like they had you know, raising their children. And so my journey has just been to fill that niche and help people, help women who need help because well, what, what I was going to say, and, and didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. you know, we are a society that, in 240 years, we haven't elected a, a female nominee to be a president of the United States. Right. And so, I guess what I'm going is that the attitudes toward women in our society, in our American society, are, are really skewed and favored to the male. Yeah, I would, you know, I would absolutely agree with you in that it's been a patriarchal society, right? And because of that, the man has usually, you know, traditionally here been the breadwinner. 
and somebody, let me tell you this, when somebody is about to get divorced, this is typically what happens. Male thinks, oh no, my money. He goes to the bank, locks out of the bank account, goes, <laughs> checks out his 401k. Yeah. Female thinks, what am I gonna, where am I gonna live? Where are my kids going to be? How are they going to stay clothed? clothed? And so by the time they get to an attorney, they're saying, here's what my interests are. Me, my, my livelihood, and my kids' livelihood, and I need representation. You, you have, uh, you're an advocate, and I, and I think that that's what I, I, I see you more as an advocate, because to, to be in that, in that line, in that type of representation, you have to really feel and be so strongly inclined to represent somebody that, is, I don't want to say, use the word vested, but in, in, in such a disadvantaged position that they need somebody like you. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and more and more the, the courts here at Arizona are starting to recognize, you know, this is a, a two-party marriage. A marriage is for two people. Yeah. And so each one of them have done specific things and each one of them have contributed, contributed to the household. And maybe instead of favoring one or the other, we should start splitting this down the middle, right? And so that's where I come in. I just want to advocate and make sure that women who go to the courtroom get their say in court and get their day in court and get to go up there and say here's what my worries are and this is what this is what I want and so the court can look at them and say absolutely in in your journey um, and let's talk a little bit about the business side of your yeah of your practice because this is um, this is about you really I mean now you not only are wearing the hat of Esquire. Yes. <laughs> but you have to be the guy that opens the door for the business, the guy that, you know, markets the business. I mean, you wear all the hats. Yeah, that is actually really difficult. I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs yes. have come in here and yes. said, that's, you know, that's the hard part about it because yep, you're worrying you about bet. your own bills, you're worrying about your own things, and then opening the door and then doing the work, it's like, you know, you kind of have to put on different personalities in sure. a way. You have to sure. say, okay, right now I'm going to do the legal work. Right now I'm going to do the marketing. Um, you know, I wrote an ebook for, it's called The Women's Guide to Divorce in Arizona. And it, it's 80 pages. I give away for free on my website. Um, but Why that long? Yeah, because there's so many, <laughs> there's so many, <laughs> there's so many things that are, that are unique to women that women care about and that they need to hear, then they need, they need to read something that validates what they feel, what they come into my office and say. And so 80 pages, no one's gonna read that whole thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's be honest, but you might see the, the subheadings, the chapter title headings and say, hey, this is what I care There's about. There's enough information there where you can pick the, the subject that affects you and that you're interested in. Absolutely. And you're giving them that information for free. Absolutely. Um, so in, in this journey as an entrepreneur, what has been, as a entrepreneur, as a business person, the most challenging thing that you've found so far? Uh, I would say, I would say keeping up with the emotional side of it. Uh, just because what I do is so emotional that sometimes I just want to bring it home. Dude, I mean, that, I was going to ask you that. I mean, how you're bringing somebody else's emotions and, and tragedies and and problems and disputes and fights uh, yes. and disagreements to you. And you seem to be like a nice guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're laughing all the time. You got a, you're got well better. You. I met your wife. She's nice. Yeah. I mean, you, you're a terrific couple. So how do you separate that? How can you? Uh, how do you do that in your mind? You know, it's difficult because sometimes I, my wife will tell you this. You know, we're in bed at night or something. And I'll say, I can't believe this case. I can't. <laughs> I can't believe the judge said that. And she'll say, let it go. You know, it's 1030 at night. <laughs> How do you put on the game, please? <laughs> right. So I just try I just try my best to just, you know, do what I enjoy. I enjoy doing all of it, the work and the yep. play. But go out and, you know, I'm just going to stick to my hobbies. I love watching baseball and going to baseball games. And then and during the day when I'm at the office, just put my whole heart into, you know, what I'm doing. And But that part is... You're right. Incredibly difficult. It, it, it's got. It's got to be. Um, and it, you know, it. For me, it's difficult to. You know, to understand <laughs> it, to comprehend it. How you can, 
you know, separate both, but that's your ability as an entrepreneur. And also, um, uh, as, as an attorney, you're always aware that, you know, you're presenting somebody, that you're advocating for somebody, defending somebody. Right. And you have a niche and you found a niche. Um, yeah. Are you looking to expand maybe your practice into some other areas? Uh, yeah, so I do I do, do some uh, wills and trusts. Okay. And actually, you know, part of my, part of my journey here is that I've done some er other areas of law, consumer law, helping, you know, suing car dealerships. That's what I consider my, a little break sometimes from just going to the family court. Suing so car dealerships, somebody got a lemon. and Somebody got a lemon. There's somebody, a lemon law here in, in, in California. It's, I mean, well, in, in Arizona. Arizona lemon law is not very good. I'll not very you good. That. You can't you can't live as an attorney as a consumer lawyer here in Arizona. <laughs> Because um, there's not enough. So the best advisor is, look, if you're going to buy a car, don't buy a car that is too too old. Right. <laughs> right. Take, take it to your mechanic. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> Three things you got to know. you got to know a good mechanic, mm -hmm. a good doctor, and a good attorney. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, we found you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Alex, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, uh, someday I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to figure out how to... How, how you do it? How you separate that emotion from the from the thing? Yeah, I don't. I can't tell you a good answer to that. Maybe, maybe the trick is probably the baseball games that you go to. Maybe that's it. They're so boring enough that I think you're <laughs> just. With that, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>